But like if someone took a shot at Wayne Gretzky, Marty McSorley would punch you in your face. What's up everybody, welcome to a conversation with Colin. I'm Greg and this is my roommate Colin. Now, every so often Colin says something crazy. So every Tuesday and Thursday we reach into my topic pile, toss one at him, have a conversation about it. If you like the idea of this show, like the video, share it with your friends, then subscribe to us here on YouTube. Colin, are you ready? Yes. All right. Today's topic of conversation is hockey goons. Now this is a fascinating little thing I didn't know anything about. Okay. There are players on hockey teams that sole purpose is to punch people in the face. Yes, although it's a diminishing role today, but yeah. All right, well talk, talk to me a little about the hockey goon and what all this means. Um, so uh, the hockey goon, also known, known as the enforcer, mm -hmm. um, was typically for many years up until somewhat recently, maybe like right around the lockout in 2004-2005. Uh, the Dark Ages. The Dark Ages, yeah, where we lost an entire season of hockey. It was very tragic. Oh my god. Um, the nation almost never recovered. The, the goon was, uh, or the enforcer, was basically designed to play only a few minutes a game. Um, and he was basically there to make sure that there was someone that could kind of deal retribution to the other team if, say, one of their star players was the victimized by a dirty hit, or the other team's enforcer wanted to kind of throw down to kind of get everyone's energy level up or, or things of this nature. So um, it was a very specific, uh, unskilled position on a hockey team okay. that has kind of uh, evolved into something else more recently. What has it evolved into now? Uh, um, more recently, there's no, there's no roster room really for a player like that anymore. Like now, like a fourth line center or fourth line defenseman or whatever that needs to uh, throw down every once in a while also needs to kind of contribute offensively. He needs to have a solid plus minus rating. He needs to... Uh, be able to move the puck, he needs to have skating skills. Um, so the game is not qu played quite the same way it was in the 70s, 80s, and 90s as it is today. It's a faster game, and so um, the goon has kind of been shunned by some teams, including mm -hmm. my own. Mm -hmm. yeah. The New York Islanders, yes. of course. All right, but so they're not calling people up from the minors to fight anymore. Is hockey getting too civilized for your tastes? No, I mean, I, 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 I understand why people don't like fighting in hockey, and I understand that. I don't. I understand that most it's people... It's an interesting thing. Well, I... I, I <laughs> I like it, and I also understand why it exists. Uh -huh. um, it's well. Let me, let me put it this way: like, in, in this, if you go on YouTube, you're on YouTube right now. Actually. Yeah, but don't click off yet unless you've already liked, <laughs> shared it with your friends, and subscribed. Uh, but you can find plenty of, of of line brawls and plenty of bench clearing brawls from back in the day. Um, and a lot of hockey players back then just had a, a, a mental and physical toughness um, where they can kind of take care of themselves. Mm -hmm. And then that kind of evolved into something that was more. Uh, assigned to a, a few role players on the team that would take care of the fighting. So um, a player like Marty McSorley on the Kings defended Wayne Gretzky. And Wayne Gretzky wouldn't do his dirty work. Wayne Gretzky did fight every once in a while. Yeah. Um, not very often at all. Now, did um, he fight well? No. Yeah, exactly. Um, Pretty boy. But like if someone took a shot at Wayne Gretzky, Marty McSorley would punch you in your face. Uh -huh. So it kind of made you think twice about what you were doing. And those players still exist. And actually, when the Islanders played the Penguins uh, two years ago, and it was the third most penalized game in NHL history, that was when the Islanders had brought up all of their, like a couple of their goons, including Michael Haley, who recently signed with the Rangers, unfortunately. Oh, uh, they I'm called him up Haley. in order to fight. Um, and that was because the game previous, uh, the Penguins goal, uh, the Penguins goaltender uh, fought the Islanders goaltender and broke his like his nose and like embarrassed him. So the next game was for them to kind of right the wrongs of that game. The Islanders ended up winning big in that game and also getting a lot of penalties. So it's a game. It, uh, fighting and goonery in hockey is about cadence, it's cadence and it's about energy. Um, it's about uh, uh, ebbs and flows, which is really important in hockey because okay. hockey is all about ebbs and flows. So how does it still exist, period? Like, why is there still fighting in hockey? Is it always going to be this way? I think it is. I think there's a conflict. I think that the hardcore hockey fans understand why fighting is in the game, and so they like it. And you say it's there because of ebbs and flows to bring up, uh, you take retribution on people who are, you know, going after your star mm. players to, if you're, like, in a slump to get you guys riled back right, up. Right, right. If you let up a, a weak goal, for instance, mm -hmm. the team's down, you're at home, the crowd's not into it, the players aren't into it, you send your goon out. Maybe the other team sends their goon out. Pushing and shoving happens, they start fighting, the crowd's into it, maybe a huge punch is landed, everyone's standing up on the benches, hitting their sticks against the boards, making a lot of noise, then you got a lot of energy, you get your first line back on, you score a goal. That's like kind of like kind of the, the rationale behind it. So is this in a way like professional wrestling of a way? Like I, I'm the Islanders and you're some other team, I only know one team in the NHL, and I send out my goon, and like you see my goon, so you send your goon out knowing this is about to happen? Yeah, so I mean a lot of times... So it's just totally orchestrated. Yeah, sometimes, because well in that Penguins-Islanders game for instance, the Islanders were fined $100,000 for clearly premeditating the entire thing. Yeah. Because Haley fought like almost everyone. 
Like he tried to fight the goalie. He tried to fight this guy. <laughs> fought this guy. Like all at once. Like just like it just happened. And I show you the video, and it's yeah. hilarious. And you can find that video online. It is funny. If, if uh, I've if I've if by this point in a conversation with Colin, I've gotten good enough at editing, I will be linking to it right around here. Um, so so just consider that hockey has a uh, fighting rather has a place in hockey, and the hardcore fans understand it, but it turns off people that don't understand hockey, but it might be into hockey, and they're watching it and it's a great game, it's fast, it's back and forth, it's high scoring, which I don't like high scoring hockey, but a lot of people do, and then suddenly dudes are fighting, and they're like, why are these guys just fighting, and why are the referees just standing there, yeah. and letting it happen, it's, well, it's because it's allowed, and, and, and there's a place for it, and you saw in the playoffs, because we watched some of the playoffs together, how when a team plays each other six, seven times in a row in a series, how ugly those series gets, and how people just fight over and over again and it gets really gritty and really emotional because hockey is a really emotional sport and fighting is kind of one of the conduits by which the emotion is let out and it has real repercussions like I've said in the game. So I don't think it's going to go anywhere but I don't think the NHL itself that the office like that the, the front office likes fighting anymore because uh, it turns off the casual fans that they need to grow the sport and so I think you're going to see more penalties I think you're going to see more instigation penalties which happens when someone instigates a fight they get an extra two minutes maybe they get a misconduct mm -hmm. maybe they're kicked out of the game. Um, to decrease fighting, but I don't think it's ever going to be illegal in the sport, and it never should be. Who is the best goon of all time? <sighs> That's tough. I really like Rob Ray. Um, I think uh, Ty Domi is one of the greats because he was small and scrappy, um, and you can find plenty of footage, again, on YouTube of him um, taunting fans and going crazy. I think he actually went into the crowd and fought a fan once, and you can, and you can find that. Um, <laughs> took off his skate, tried to murder him. I actually think what happened was a dude was taunting him and like leaning on the glass in the penalty box, and the glass collapsed and broke, and then Ty Domi just went to town on him. And it's, and it's all on video, it's really good stuff. That's my kind of hockey. Yeah, but there are, there are great goons in, in, in national history. Okay. Yeah. Well, Colin, I think that about covers this conversation. Uh, if you guys liked it at home, make sure you like it, share it, then subscribe to us here on YouTube. Uh, until then, we'll be back every Tuesday and Thursday with a new topic for Colin to talk about. Until then, I hope you have a conversational day.